damn it, this is Rabbi Sal Solomon with a rabbinical reflection for the week of January 30th, 2011. In 1984, an adorable old biddy named Clara Peller took the nation by storm when she asked, Where's the beef? Where's the beef? At the time, she was peeking under hamburger buns looking for a sandwich as delicious and meaty as what she got at Wendy's. Other fast food chains, the commercial was saying, were stingy with the steer and padding their patties with fillers and fixings. Last week, a new question was asked, this time of Taco Bell. Instead of, where's the beef, the new question is, What in God's name is the shice you're stuffing into a taco? It's a subtly different question, but an important one, because a group of lawyers is now suing Taco Bell. Why? According to the USDA, to call something beef, it has to be at least 70% meat, and the rest can be fat. If it's only 50% meat and 50% fat, it's filler or Seth Rogen. To be called even a beef product, it has to contain at least 40% actual meat. The lawyers suing Taco Bell say that the Mexican food chain uses a beef-like mixture that is only 35% meat. The other 65% is not. Not that all the other ingredients are bad. There's soybeans, oats, wheat, fiberglass insulation, but if you, the consumer, are ordering beef, you should be guaranteed that at least two-thirds of what's going into your tummy is the ground-up remains of a murdered cow. Now, Taco Bell has denied filling its tacos with filler. They say the attorneys are simply underestimating their secret mix of beef, spices, beef helper, beef helpless, vermin excrement, and marginally beef-related objects. Now you may ask, Rabbi, why are you weighing in on this controversy? Aren't you kosher? No. I enjoy dipping a shrimp-flavored ham sandwich into a glass of milk as much as the next guy. Probably more. But even if I were as kosher as I am irritating... Would I not feel an obligation to protect the stomachs and anuses of my fellow man? Let us not prejudge too harshly. Who among us has ventured into Taco Bell expecting a gourmet meal? In fact, who among us hasn't been tempted to peek inside a Taco Bell burrito and then stopped ourselves thinking, uh, no, sometimes it's best not to know. And let's be honest Even the highest quality Mexican food can cause a person to crap like a dying gorilla. I myself have been to Mexican takeout places where if you order more than $15, they throw in an extra roll of toilet paper. My God, you know why they use refried beans? They couldn't fry them right in the first place. And there's a reason the initials of Taco Bell's Mexi Melt are M and M. They melt in your mouth and in your pants. Now, I enjoy diarrhea as much as the next guy, probably more. And there's something very organic about a kind of food that looks exactly the same coming out as it did going in. But we must demand honesty of our merchants. If you fill your quesadilla from a case of sawdust, we have a right to know. And so, only time and the courts will show whether Taco Bell can stop this unfortunate smear campaign or if this campaign can stop unfortunate smears. But my friends, this lesson extends to our personal lives and interactions. How often do we give only 35% of ourselves when we could give 50 or 90 or the much quoted but mathematically disturbing 110? Do we really listen when we have a conversation? At work, do we drudge away while keeping one eye on the clock, one eye on YouTube, and one eye on the window? When being intimate with our spouse, do we think really about her? Or about that hot little blonde girl with the low-rise jeans and the overbike at the Rite Aid? 
You know, the one who always wears those tight pink swaggers and lots of rings and has those three piercings in the left ear. No, no, oh, the right ear. The right. Oh, yes. But shame on you. Shame for neglecting your wife. Why are you giving her filler when you should be giving her your meat? And wife, are you being fully honest about what has filled your taco? And so, I say unto Taco Bell, and to you, my dear listeners, you can either improve your fare, or if you keep dishing out the same dreck, at least be honest about it. If you do, I will keep patronizing Taco Bell, just as I did today for lunch. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go drop a chalupa. This has been a rabbinical reflection by Rabbi Sal Solomon, Temple Sons of Bitches in Great Neck, New York. Oh, nay.